The first half of the 20th century was the start of the Golden Age of Armour. After getting a taste of what tanks are capable of on the battlefields of World War I, great nations of the world were all pouring resources into their nascent tank industries, experimenting with all sorts of layouts and weapons, and the Empire of Japan was one of the nations keen on developing their own tanks. During the 1930s, the Japanese armor divisions had two main vehicles. The Type 89 Aigo and the Type 95 Ha-Go. The Type 89 medium tank Aigo, meaning the first model, was accepted into service in 1929. Its initial prototype was based on the French Renault FT, but it went through lots of changes during the development process. The tank was armed with a 57mm cannon, pretty powerful for its time, and capable of knocking out pillboxes. And one of the improved models of the vehicle became the world's first mass-produced diesel engine tank. The Aigo proved to be very effective against outdated tanks of the Chinese army, but by the middle of the decade, it was clear that it was lacking both mobility and armor. The initial tests of the Ha Go were conducted in 1934. It was a light tank weighing less than 8 tons and armed with a 37mm gun. This was the first vehicle to receive the Bell Crank suspension system invented by Army officer Tomio Hara. It became standard on the majority of the subsequently designed Japanese tanks. The Hago proved to be a reliable support for the Aigo. All in all, the Japanese made more than 2,000 of those tanks, and later used the Hago as the basis for the Kami amphibious tank, known for its unusual boat-like appearance. Since the early 1930s, the Japanese were also experimenting with multi-turret layouts. One of their experiments, the multi-turreted Rogo, can be found in the premium part of the tree, but in real life it didn't have much of a history. Only a few prototypes were made, and the tank never went into production. Obviously, the Japanese weren't going to settle for the Aigo. They quickly started working on the succeeding vehicle. The new tank was to receive the same 57mm cannon, but everything else had to be designed from scratch. The new specification was issued to Japanese companies among those Mitsubishi, and by 1936, the engineers of the company were already testing prototypes. One of those not only met all the requirements, but also was very cheap to produce. Eventually, this tank was accepted into service as Chia, standing for Medium Tank Model 3. The Imperial Japanese Army got their first Chihas in 1938. One year later, they were already used in the battles of Kalhingol, where the Empire of Japan clashed with the USSR on the border between Mongolia and Manchuria. Before that, the IJA only fought against the Chinese National Revolutionary Army that had to rely on outdated British vehicles. The Soviet armor was in a different league, though, Soviet models possessed high-velocity main guns, which outranged the Japanese tanks. Japanese engineers took that into account and started working on the model with a different weapon arrangement. The result of this work was the ho E, a derivative of the Chi-Ha, armed with a 175mm gun. It wasn't the most elegant design, but there wasn't much choice at the time. The more versatile high-velocity Type 147mm tank gun only became available in 1942. Tanks that were equipped with a new cannon were designated Shinoto Chiha or Chiha Kai. Chiha tanks were reasonably effective when fighting pre-war vehicles, but new Shermans were a bit too much to handle for them. The Hargo light tanks also didn't have much of a future on the battlefields of World War II. It was clear that both vehicles needed a replacement ASAP. 
The Hago was superseded by the Ke-Ni, which featured thicker, welded armor of improved shape. But the production of the new tank did not begin until 1941, and only around a hundred units were made. The Chi Ha successor also had its fair share of problems. The Chi He, or medium tank Model 6, was basically an improved version of the Chi Ha, with a new enlarged three-man turret and welded armor instead of a riveted one. But it still lacked firepower. By the middle of the war, the Type 1 gun was hopelessly outdated. Naturally, the Japanese soldiered on and designed a new version of the vehicle. It featured a new large turret incorporating a Type 3 75mm tank gun, but had the mobility and armor of the previous model. The new tank was called the Chi Nu, or Medium Tank Model 10. As the IJA only had around a hundred of each, the Chi Nu and the Chi He served at the same time. It was a very difficult time for the Japanese tank industry indeed. Not to mention that by that point the Imperial Japanese Army had other pressing concerns. Did that mean that the Japanese abandoned their fight to keep up with the Allies? Obviously not. In 1942 and 1943, they tested the new Chi To tank. Even though it was based on the Chi Ha, the vehicle was more than 10 tons heavier, and it was fitted with new armor and a modern gun, the Type 5 cannon. Performance-wise, it was on a par with the German Panzer IV, or late modifications of the Sherman. By the start of 1944, the Chi To was ready to go into production, but only two were ever completed, as the Japanese were pouring everything they had into the Navy. It's worth noting that at one point, Japanese engineers managed to put the Type 5 cannon in the Chi Nu turret. A tank of this configuration is available in War Thunder as a Rank 3 premium vehicle. The most advanced tank developed by the Empire of Japan was the Type 5 Chi Ri, or medium tank Model 9. It still had some Chi Ha DNA, but it was heavier than the Chi To and was armed with a powerful gun equipped with an autoloader. In fact, this tank was almost as big as the Tiger II, but it wasn't meant to be. A single prototype was still incomplete when the war ended. As one of the last-ditch efforts, the military tried to outfit the few combat-worthy tanks they had with naval guns, but the atomic bombings in August 1945 rendered those efforts pointless. After the Empire of Japan capitulated to Allied demands, the surviving Japanese armor was supposed to be scrapped, but many vehicles remained in service of the Japanese self-defense forces until the early 1960s. Some people don't think much of the contribution that the Empire of Japan made to the art of tank building, as even the most advanced of Japanese tanks had difficulties fighting against vehicles available to the enemies of the Empire when it mattered most. And many brilliant designs never made it to proper production at all. So tell us, what do you think? Is Japanese armor underrated? Please tell us what you think in the comments below, because it's valuable to us. We love listening. <laughs>